Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair and it's car booty time again. Yeah, car booty time. So, we have an old computer here. This one says Intel Inside Pentium 4. It's a, well, kind of beige and other code case. So I'm hoping this is going to be a socket 478 with AGP. I could be unlucky here because it has quite a lot of USB, there's no cards plugged in it, it has onboard video, so maybe this is just like a 775 Pentium 4 and that isn't a retro machine, really anything with AGP earlier is retro, anything afterwards isn't, although some high end socket 775 motherboards are fetching good money, I will say. And certain manufacturers but I don't hold up much hope for this one what I will mention is this one has a floppy disk in yeah and that's probably rare and worth more than the drive if it actually functions yeah don't find many of these at all and the ones I do find don't seem to work or well, we have one. So, what's in the box? Well, let's have a look. It has some sort of... Uh, I've taken the screws out of the wrong side. You've probably noticed that already actually on the video. So, yeah, I took the screws out of the wrong side of the case. It has like these little uh, clips or something. Okay. What do you think, guys? How lucky am I today? Is this an AGP machine? Yes! It is an AGP machine. It's a ASRock. This is a socket 478. So this would come under the general heading of retro. P4i65G, I've had exactly this motherboard before, they weren't worth a great deal, most of these P4s are not at the moment, 20 to 40 euros, something like that, unless there's something special about them. We have a PATA drive in here, which hopefully has an operating system on, so let's get this one apart and let's have a look to see if there's anything in here worth the money I paid for the machine. A lot of these machines, by the way, these days I'm paying 20 euros. I was paying 15 euros for a long time, but inflation seems to have taken hold a little bit. Not much here, by the way. We don't have much inflation here. It's a funny thing, this. So, yeah, well, I'm just taking this out of here. I'll just mention something. We moved here in 2016, okay? Our electricity bill used to be about 60 euros a month 50 or 60 it's now 80 or 90 so it has gone up but not like stupidly amount but the thing i mean to tell you guys is about the buzz so the buzz fares haven't gone up since all the time we've been here and the same with a beer you know i mean you can get a beer and a lot of ours for 150 or two euros you could in 2016 you can now and people tell me that that hasn't changed since 2006 so Inflation on things like buzzies and that and transport. This is not like just a normal thing that this must go up in price because here it doesn't go up in price. So somebody want to figure that one? Comments below. I'm thinking about it. I think when we came on holiday here in 2014 and 2015, the buzzies were the same price as then as well. Okay. So we've talked about buzzies. We put that question out there. Yeah, in the UK they seem to like try to convince everybody that inflation is just a normal thing and then you come and live somewhere else and find out that is not the case <laughs> but the cost of these retro machines a lot of them have gone up a little bit I can't comment on other countries about that inflation thing because I've only lived in two so I could only comment from personal experience yeah 
Okay, so here's the motherboard. All the capacitors look perfectly fine on this. Don't see any problems there. Just has a single strip of DDR400 in here. CMOS battery is a little bit domed, probably faulty. This is the hard drive, 120 gig IDE pattern. Let's do the usual thing, so check for shorts. Ohms range. Fine. This has onboard VGA, so I may as well connect it. We'll just select VGA on the monitor there. Okay, let's try it. Let's power it on. Turn the power on on the ATX as well, yeah. And it's booting. This is going to work, this one is. Yeah, this is going to work. There we go. 2.66 gigahertz, so not a valuable one. Okay. I might as well just crack on and connect up the hard drive, I think. Okay, so keyboard and mouse, let's try it. It's starting by itself. This will be because of the CMOS battery being flat. I do hear the hard drive. Okay, don't worry about the CMOS. Press F1, yep. Is this going to have XP on it? Or something else? It's going to boot, I think. Yeah, XP. And we're in. No password or anything on this one. It's remarkable how many of these machines I find that are just... You know, don't have any password, they have the hard drive in them. So really there's not much to say about this one guys, other than to say if it's worth anything, yeah? I'm sure that I have had these motherboards before, they're not worth a great deal. Just if you're wondering, by do I get Tom Selleck on here? Well, it's the carnival next weekend, Saturday, and the theme is TV memories. So I'm going as Magnum PI. <laughs> I have the Hawaiian shirt and the denim shorts and stuff. I now have a wig and a moustache and a pistol and stuff. Anyways, I was looking to see what Tom Selleck looked like in Magnum PI back in the day. And then the next time I go to eBay, he pops up. The internet's weird, yeah. <laughs> There'll be video on uh, Grand Canary Uncovered, so you will definitely see me dressed up. And I believe you will get to see Detlef dressed up as a Smurf, painted blue. Yeah. And probably one scene. Remember, guys, you cannot unsee this. Yeah. <laughs> so, approach with caution. Grand Canary Uncovered. Right, so, what's this motherboard? What? I mean, I don't think these are worth anything much. I've had this board before, I'm sure. So, there's one for sale there at 135. Another one for 86. That's something different. Mine's this one, Revision GA. 154. 232. Why are people... Asking so much money for these and the other question is is anybody buying them at this price? Yeah, does anybody buy them? Well, let's have a look. So we go to advanced And we go to sold items search Well Somebody sold one for 49.99 the start of February and somebody sold one actually the day before for 2650 so isn't it strange that people have got these for sale at such a high price yeah another one there that sold in January again for 30 this is kind of what I thought these were worth so I'm a bit unsure why people have got them on such a high price guys you tell me because I can't figure that out anyway that's worth about what I thought it was. It's certainly worth more than I paid for the PC. With these 
sort of P4s that are not worth a great deal at the moment. I'm just keeping hold of them at the moment. I have plenty of storage room. So, yeah, that goes into the lockup. Okay, let's look at the next PC. Okay, guys, here's another one. So, sort of beige, or black, with a kind of a well, black, I guess is what we would call it. Surround. Yeah. What's inside this thing? Let's have a look. Two USB and then two USBs on an expansion card. And it's obviously has some sort of graphics card in this onboard sound and joystick. So this hopefully will be older than that last one. Oh, this has like the quick release top and then the side panels slide off upwards, I believe. I had a ATX case of this kind of design, but that was in the era of the Core 2 Duo, so maybe not as old as I thought, if that was any indication. Okay, get your guesses in. I'm going to say because of having this add-on uh, thing down here, this is going to be like a Pentium 3 or something like that, so yeah, something like that as in a Pentium 3 or Pentium 2, that's my guess. I'm sticking with Pentium 3. Let's have a look. Okay, big reveal. Get your guesses in, guys, in the comments. Timestamp, what have we got? I think we've got an AMD machine, actually. I never seem to guess AMD for some reason. I don't know why. Probably because I do have a lot more Intel machines. No ISA sauce on this one, so it's not one of like the really rare. AMD XP with uh, ISA. Looks like a fairly generic graphics card. No hard drive in this one, so we can't actually upload an operating system on it. Unless we did something, you know, to do that with another drive. But there isn't one with this one. Okay, let's get this out and let's have a look to see what we have. I mean, it's an MSI board, I can see that. Okay, so we have the graphics card and motherboard. Color coordinated, I'll say that much. Yeah, red graphics card on a red motherboard. Oh, a GeForce 2 MX400, very common these. Worth about £20, I seem to remember, something like that. Find a lot of these graphics cards. Probably this one's leaving with this motherboard because it just matches it so nicely. Motherboard. KT3 Ultra, so it must be good because it says Ultra on it, yeah? I mean, obviously that makes it like, obviously it's got to be good, yeah, Ultra. Full size ATX board. And we have a lot of bad capacitors. So this bunch of capacitors here, and three more there have obviously failed. These ones look okay. These ones too. Yeah, all the rest of them actually look okay. So we need to take this heat sink off anyway because we're gonna to have to change these capacitors. So let's see what we actually have here. Clearly it's an Athlon machine, Athlon XP. Okay. Yeah. Practically no heat sink compound on it. What we got? AMD Athlon 2000. So we're 2000 plus 1999. At least you didn't stick the sticker on the die. <laughs> Seen that before. So these are the bad capacitors, these ones and these, a total of eight of them. These will all be the same value, I'm sure, and all the same voltage rail. So these are 2,206.3 volt. These are also the same. These ones that look good, these are the 16 volt. So you'll pretty much always find this when you have 40 capacitors. It's the low voltage ones that are faulty. 
these ones the 16 volt ones will be on the 12 volt coming out of the atx power supply which is pretty much smoothed anyway these ones are subject to all the high frequency switching from the mosfets via the inductor so they get a lot of stress high frequency switching and basically around this era of time there was a lot of defective capacitors made and that's why they've all gone like this you often find older motherboards that don't have this problem but bear in mind older ones probably have the processor running at like 3.3 volts or something like that so it's pretty much running directly from the atx power supply okay so i'll get these changed and then let's try this to see if it works I've left the memory in, I've put the graphics card in, we have the analyzer, let's try this. Well it certainly starts D3 is not like a fairly common code. Let's take the graphics card out and see if we get the same code or different, okay so yeah same so it's probably ram unless this is just dead and it makes the same whether it's inserted or not let's take the ram out try this okay so we can say this is ram it looks a bit tarnished so i'll give this a clean and then let's see if it works. Okay, I'll put it back in the same slot as well. I'll try the other slots if it still doesn't want to start up. Same. Okay. Let's go for the other end. Yeah, so it's got that. Hmm, it still stopped with a similar code. Maybe it still doesn't like this RAM. Or oh, the slots are a bit dirty. No, this time it's gone. Okay. And yeah, and that I'm sure is telling me the graphics card isn't inserted. Let's give it a go then with the graphics card fitted. No, that seems to hang up. 2A. Which I think is where it's testing the graphics card because you'd expect it to go to 2D. Sometimes they bleep then if they're faulty. Let's try again. And back to memory. Okay, I'm going to clean the RAM slots. I'm going to clean the AGP slots as well. Let's see. Yeah, we have a picture actually. Okay, yeah, so this is booting up. Oh, well, it says the CPU fan isn't running, but it is running. Well, actually, that appears to be the fan, so I've tried the fan in this connector, which is where it originally was, and it says C fan. This one says PS fan, that says S fan. So C fan, CPU fan, I guess. And I just get this bleeping noise, I've tried it a few times. So I've taken a fan off a P4. I've connected this to the S fan, and I've put this onto the C fan. Okay, 
it now boots up without doing that. So it looks like that's actually the fan. Must be like the signal it's sending back isn't working. Easiest way to fix that if you want the seat sink is just to change the fan or just change the heat sink to be honest. So I think we can declare this one as working. I have the RAM in the other slot now in the center slot. That slot is working, it's booting up. Okay, and we can just go for the third slot, but it looks like all the RAM slots are actually fine. Okay, put it in there again. Yeah, it's going to boot again. So all the RAM slots are good. There we go. Okay. Let's have a look to see if this has any value. GeForce 2 MX400, very common. <laughs> Mine's a 64 meg, by the way, just mention that in case it makes a difference. And it seems these are extremely cheap on offer, okay? So not really worth anything. And the motherboard. KT3 Ultra. Doesn't show up in the for sale. Anybody offering these? No, nope. let's just go for the other model number, MS-6380E. Okay. No. Were any of these sold? Yeah, so one sold recently with pretty much the same process as mine for uh 75 euros but had some ram as well another one sold for 40 43 so these definitely do sell somewhere in this range of price i mean this one would go with the cpu as well okay so Definitely more than I paid for the machine, that's for sure. I hope you enjoyed that rather short car booty video this time. A little bit of work to do, some capacitors to change, nothing else. A lot of this old hardware does seem to be very reliable. It's still working like 24 years later, yeah? So, all we can do is look for more exciting stuff next week. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all soon on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now, guys.